We've heard stories of Phil's gamesmanship. Is he, is he actually good at it, or is he just good at telling everybody how good he is at gamesmanship? He's both. Okay. He's definitely both. You what's, know, a Phil, what's a good example of a well, jab? Well, Phil is, is one that is very more outwardly towards his jab, with his jabs, and he tries to uh, subtly, not always say subtly, also subtly, uh, try and get in your head with either wagers or it's... Uh, just one-liners and just that things and on top of that once he gets up he's one of the worst front runners there is how so because he'll just non-stop chap yeah you know he'll just uh, he'll chirp non-stop and then when he's down it's a little different deal you are know? you the same though when you're up on him are you jabbing at him like that yeah, it's a different style? I'm, I'm more of you know more subtle than that yeah. you know and I've always been that way uh, more so on, on the <laughs> be, because of the nature of our, of our tour uh, that's one of the unique things ab about this uh, pay-per-view event is that we're having uh, mics on there live non-stop. Well, I was describing to one of the interviews earlier is that uh, yeah, it's just going to be very different from what you normally face. I said, in essence, not really. Uh, because when I get to the golf course, I'm, I have a camera on me. When I get to the putting green or sure. range, I have a camera on me. I've had people try to sneak, sneak in... You know, camera phones and try and catch live or audio remarks in you know shag bags that we get on a, with golf balls. You know I've had it all, mm -hmm. and so this is not the, too different from what I have to face you know week in and week out. Yes, it's a live mic the, the entire time, but you know we have boom mics that are trying to get us the entire time. We have camera phones that people are on tee boxes that are are open and, and trying to record you know what we're saying or even post different things from. If I'm having a conversation with my caddy or with another player, uh, you'll have gallery members that are, you know, have their camera phones out trying to record all this. Sure. So this is not too uncommon, too new to me. You mentioned having cameras on you from the time you arrive. I felt like this year you kept upping your game in your arrival attire. You, went, you started going cutoff sleeves, you had backwards hats, sunglasses. <laughs> was that a conscious thing? No, it wasn't. No, I, I'll <laughs> the, be honest you knew the internet I, was going to go wild for that. I had done this so many times throughout the years, um, but the only difference is that this year there's been a lot more interest in, I think, the, of you know, my round that particular day, and you know sometimes they, they would cut me, they would catch me with you know cut off sleeves because I just came from the workout trailer which is in the parking lot, mm -hmm. and so I'd walk from the parking lot and didn't want to get my clothes um, you know, all sweaty because I'm going to take a shower in a clubhouse, and so yeah they they get me in. Uh, you know those situations, um, but that's not too uncommon for a lot of the tour pros. Mm -hmm. A lot of tour pros, and I just again happen to have cameras on me all the time once yeah. I arrive at the golf course. So something that is unique and what I would say un well, not so unique, but it's uncommon for me. Um, is it, well, it's a normality that for me showing up at a golf course and doing these different things has now been captured. Your and Phil's relationship, it seems like it has <clears throat> evolved over the years, and you guys have been kind of quick to downplay some of the previous mm. parts of your relationship. But I want to know, take me back to like the early to mid-2000s, what's that relationship like? Do you guys text each other? Do you talk on the range? And how is that different than it is today? No, we, we definitely didn't, didn't text one another back in those days. Uh -huh. uh, we were competing against one another. I was one, and, and he was two in the world for so many weeks. And we were trying to outdo one another. And it's very similar to what Jack and Arnold went through early part of their career. You know, they didn't really acknowledge one another, you know, like they did later in their career. And certainly post, you know, post playing at, at an elite level, um, they became a lot closer. And that's what has transitioned with us is that we become, we've become, we've understood that, that we are certainly more alike than we would like to admit. <laughs> Uh, and we both care and passionate ab about a lot of the same things, and you know that's one of the reasons why you know, Phil's donating you know, his charitable efforts to the military. I was born and raised around the military. My father served, and you know, so these are things that you know I wasn't really privy to uh, early on in my relationship with him, but I've become very close to with him in a, a lot of these aspects. If you could swap out one part of your game. For one part of Phil's game, oh, it's what would it definitely be? a short game. Yeah, that's easy. Right? It's it's sick, you know. It's uh, what he can do around the greens. It's just uh, just amazing. I I got a chance early in my career when um, I was working with Butch and Sevy was working with Butch at the same time that we'd coincide a lot of my training camps around Sevy, and so I got a chance to get to know Sevy at a, at a pretty good level around you know 
short game wise and watch him hit a lot of shots and have him explain a lot of the things how he did it um, and, you know what he did was phenomenal but I think what Phil does is even better because Seppi had Seppi had a 56 degree sandwich and he had to make it work the you know the the pins weren't as tight then but the greens were a little bit slower but with the pins are being so tight and Phil going to like a 60 or 64 degrees of loft he's able to hit shots that no one could hit but then again He's trying to pull off shots that, that no one's ever tried to pull off, and he does. You know, that's what made Sebi so amazing, is that he hit shots that we only maybe even thought about entertaining for you know, a millisecond, but he'd pull it off. Well, Phil's doing the same thing. What seems like high risk to a lot of us is not high risk to him because he's that good. All right, we've got a few a list of questions in a folder we marked. If we ever get to interview Tiger, we'll do mm -hmm. a few rapid fires. You did an interview with Bill McAtee in 2015 at the Masters that no one followed up on. Did you really pop a bone in your wrist out of place at the 2015 Masters and put it back in? Mm -hmm, what did. was the follow-up like for that? Was there, I mean, was it all swollen after that? Yeah, it was. Or, yeah. It was swollen and I didn't play for another couple of weeks. Um, it was ice and stem wow. uh, for a couple of weeks uh, before I tried to even get to the point where I tried to strengthen it again, but I had to get the swelling out. Mm -hmm. What's the most nervous you've ever been over one golf shot? Oh, know? that's very simple. It was the 92 uh, Nissan LA Open. It was my first tee shot ever in a PGA Tour event. And I was an amateur, 16. And I'll never forget, it was, eh, this is no, no big deal, right? It's just a three wood down the fairway. Mm -hmm. and it's just like any other three wood. But I practiced things for fine. I got the ball teed up, teed up, teed up fine, built a stance, took it back. And all of a sudden, it felt like the club weighed 15 pounds. I didn't know where it came from. Mm -hmm. I'd never felt like, I, evidently, I didn't have the nerves until, well, nervousness until I got into a position where I'm starting to make a, a golf swing to hit this golf ball. So once I get past the takeaway, it's when usually when I start thinking about trying to make a golf swing, and then all of a sudden, boom, this 15 pound object shows up in my hand. And I, I'll never forget just hitting it right down the middle of the fairway, but I don't remember what impact felt like. Right, you blacked out on this. I it was like, wow, I can't believe I should pull that off. And I'd never felt a feeling like that ever since. Has anything in the more competitive part of your career, has anything no, ever compared No, nothing to has that? ever yeah. felt like that. I've had some pressure, I, I think some, some pressure putts that I've made, mm -hmm. but nothing's ever felt like that. If you could have one mulligan for any one shot in your career, what would it be? Oh gosh, there's one be just one. <laughs> there's there's so many. Uh, I think if I if I look back on the the round I played at the uh, at Quad Cities in '96 when I lost to the, you know the Gripper, that was a moment where I I've forgotten all of, of my training and I've forgotten how I won won events and I got you know. I uh, took myself out of a rhythm and how I played events and just because it was a tour event. And I learned from that lesson and I won a few weeks later at, at, at Vegas for my first event on tour. But that was a, a, a big learning moment for me. What's your biggest fashion regret in your career? I, none. Because no I, fashion I, regrets? No, because at the time I made it look good. <laughs> <laughs> it was the MC Hammer pants, it was a big baggy shirt, but we all wore them. I know. You know, we, at the time, if you remember, um, Ashworth had the shirts, the double thick cotton that went past our elbows, but we all wore them because, you know, Freddie wore them. Yeah. You know, he, he made it look cool. That's why we picked up our sleeves and tried to make it fit and tried to hold it up on our neck. Um, but that was a, a time in which we all wore baggy stuff. And now everything's going to more tighter, streamlined fit. Very last one. What is a skill of yours that you think is somehow unappreciated or underrated that maybe people don't, people don't give you enough credit for? <laughs> Asking you to brag on yourself, but I was always curious to hear that one. I, 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 I probably underestimated my level of enjoyment for comics. Yeah? Comics. Yeah, I, I grew up trying to... Um, save you know my, my my savings from you know gambling at the golf course or my paper routes or you know all those different things to buy comics yeah it was back when you had hard you know hard hardback comics and so that was a time in which yeah i 
I've always fell in love with you know Marvel and DC universes, and uh, everyone around me knows how much I, I love it. My mom loves it. Uh, she actually keeps me more up to date than I am, and so that's been, been, been fun over the years. And cool. Appreciate the time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Of course. Appreciate thanks. it. Thanks. Our brother. Appreciate it.